Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna go over a report with you from John Hussman. He runs Hussman Funds, and he is someone who is an expert on market valuation. And he comes out with a memo every month, and I really enjoy reading it because it brings a lot of insight into where the markets are from a valuation standpoint and what we can expect going forward. I'll leave a link down to this report so you can check it out for yourself. So now let's get right into what John Hussman has to say about the stock market and the economy right now in November 2020. So the first thing that this opens up with is a quote from someone on CNBC on November 12th. The one reality that you can never change is that a higher price asset will produce a lower return than a lower price asset. You can't have your cake and eat it. You can enjoy it now or you can enjoy it steadily in the distant future, but not both. And the price we pay for having this market go higher and higher now is a lower 10 year return from the peak. So this is really the key point of John Hussman's argument that the stock market is going up in the short run, but the more it goes up now, the less return you're going to have in the future. Because 10 years from now, the return is going to be derived from the future set of cash flows from the entire stock market. And the more that investors are willing to pay for those cash flows, the lower the return will ultimately be. And this is also stated again right here, the higher price an investor pays today for some amount of cash flow in the future, the lower the long-term return can expect from the investment. However, there's a distinction between the return in the long run, 10 years or more, and the return in the short run. Even though long run, returns are derived from cash flows, the short-term returns are driven by the psychology of investors. And so this makes sense, this has always happened throughout history, where the stock market reaches prices where it makes no logical sense that they should be there. However, investors are just overly greedy and keep pushing up the stock price until we get to a point where it all comes crashing down. And then this brings us down to uh, what this research firm is very good at, which is projecting 10 years out what the future returns will be. So now what this chart is shows the projected returns 10 years out versus what they actually were. So this line, it represents a portfolio of 60% in the S&P 500 in the stock market, 30% treasury bonds and 10% treasury bills. And this chart goes all the way back to 1928, showing that where valuation is and where interest rates are, this mix of investments, here is how it's projected to play out 10 years from now. Because again, six months from now, one year from now, anything can happen. Just because investors have been greedy over the past few years doesn't mean they won't get even more greedy now and push the price up even more in the short term. But in the long run, 10 years or more, it's pretty clear that fundamentals will come into play. And so even though it's hard to predict where the market will be six months or one year from now, looking out 10 years, looking out to a farther time horizon, it becomes much easier to have a reliable estimate of where uh, stock market returns will end up. And so what this chart is, is the blue line is what the estimated 12 year nominal return is based on valuations and interest rates today. And the red line is what actually happened 10 years following the prediction. And as you can see in the past, the correlation is extremely strong where this firm forecasting out 10 years has been extremely accurate by looking at where valuations are now and projecting the future return out 10 years, you can see that this has been a reliable indicator of future returns. And so the red line obviously stops 10 years ago because we haven't yet had the data to fill this in, but this whole decade, the expected returns have been going down as the stock market has kept going up. And right now we are sitting at the lowest point ever on this chart, which is at negative 1.56%. So what this chart is showing you is that if you have this portfolio, 60% in stocks, 30% in bonds, and 10% in notes, your expected return is going to be negative after 10 years. So you could hold this portfolio in 12 years from now, based on valuations today, you will have less money with this portfolio in 12 years than you will right now. And a big reason for this is because of the valuation of the stock market. And so this chart is showing something called the margin adjusted PE or the MAPE. This is a little different than the normal Schiller PE ratio that I've talked about on this channel because this one accounts for profit margins of companies. So really this measures both the price to earnings and the efficiency of the companies, which I think shows a better picture of valuation. And from this chart, uh, this ratio is now the highest it's ever been. It's been, it's higher than the peak in 1929. It's higher than the peak in 2000 and in 2008. And so he talks about this in this paragraph, the chart below shows our margin adjusted BE, which is better correlated with actual subsequent market returns than nearly every measure we've tested or evaluated. 
And then he goes on to say the valuation of U.S. stocks have never been more extreme, even at the 1929 and 2000 market peaks. I should add that I've intentionally excluded the impact of pandemic GDP and profit weakness, which would otherwise make this measure even more extreme. So this chart isn't even the real chart. This is adjusted to take out that one quarter this year where we had a huge drop in GDP and every company was losing money. He didn't even account for that in this chart. He adjusted that. And so with that included, stocks would be at an even more extreme valuation than they are right now. And even now they're higher than they've ever been in the past 100 years. Now, in terms of what Hussman is predicting in terms of what will happen in the stock market, even though he has no predictions in terms of in a year, the market's going to be here in five years, it's going to be here. He does expect the S&P 500 to lose two thirds of its value over the completion of the current market cycle. This loss would not even breach historical valuation norms, but it would at least bring our estimates of long-term expected S&P 500 returns closer to their historical average in contrast to the negative 10 to 12 year prospects we observe at present. So when you think about that, that the stock market could drop by two thirds and we still wouldn't be what's considered a normal valuation for the S&P 500. I think that just brings into perspective how inflated the stock market is right now and why all investors should be cautious of this and adjusting their portfolios accordingly. Now, if you wanna see what this would roughly equate to in terms of the S&P 500, the SPY is now at 355. And so if this loses 60% of its value, this index would go back down to around 150. And that is right where we were at the peak in 2008. We hit 150, 156. And back in 2000, the peak there was just under that 151. So if this really does happen, if the stock market does lose two thirds of its value, we'll be right back where we were in 2000. And this would mean that we would have a 20 year stretch where the stock market went nowhere, just went sideways. And you shouldn't be surprised by this. Uh, I've shown that long term chart in multiple videos on this channel showing that there's been multiple periods of time where the stock market hasn't really done anything for periods of 10, 20 years or more, where the stock market just has a years long consolidation of 20 years. So that is what we could be seeing right now. We could still be in the middle of that uh, decades long stock market consolidation. And here a common justification for the stock market valuation is brought up and that is that interest rates are historically low. So investors are now under the impression that low interest rates justify current valuation extremes. But the problem is saying low interest rates justify extreme valuations doesn't mean that these extremes are okay and that because we're adding extreme in interest rates, we can still have satisfactory returns in the stock market. You know, Hussman obviously thinks this is a false notion. It's the same as an argument that dismal expected returns in bonds should be accompanied by dismal expected returns in stocks. It's like saying that poking yourself in the eye justifies smashing your thumb with a hammer and that's exactly where we are now. So we're now at a point where the future returns for stocks will be poor, bonds will be poor, so we're at a point now where it's going to be hard to find satisfactory 10 year returns really anywhere. Um, I don't think we're going to find it in stocks, certainly not in bonds. And so that is the situation we've put ourselves in now. And now the last thing that's talked about in terms of valuation is how no one's really talking about this, especially on financial television like CNBC. Their single minded focus is the, on the latest move, their full fledged immersion of the now. So even though it, all investors should be thinking long term, um, that doesn't make for exciting television. So no one on these stations like CNBC ever think of what the long term will bring. Instead, they just focus what's going to happen in the next one or two months. And this is just pointed out where where we saw that quote at the beginning of this article well, that was said where that was said on CNBC. And so the interviewers on CNBC um, sort of argue with him saying CNBC said things like this. I mean, last time around you talked to him and he called it a bubble. It seemed plausible. Now it seems like he's doubling down. You start to weigh up the possibilities that he could be missing a further rally in the markets. So yeah, guys, don't listen to uh, what they say on CNBC. They say this every time. And if you do want to take advice from CNBC, probably doing the opposite of what they say is better than actually following uh, what they're saying. Now, so reading this report showing how poor that uh, this firm expects future stock market returns to be, you would expect that this firm is, you know, all out short the market, short stock, short bonds. However, this isn't the case. Here's the quote, even at extreme valuations, we're open to adopting a constructive near term outlook with safety nets from time to time, provided the positive market internals aren't accompanied by an extreme overextension. We may adopt a more neutral term outlook, but we don't adopt or amplify outright bearish outlook expect except when we observe deterioration or divergence in measures of market internals. So even though stock market returns over the next 12 years are expected to be poor, this firm still isn't shorting stock. They still have a neutral to positive near term outlook. And that is obviously because sentiment is good in the stock market right now. We have all these notions that the Fed is going to save stocks. 
that the economy is roaring back. And so it is very possible over the next one, two, three years, stocks could continue going up. And so I tend to agree with this. That's why even though I do have a lot of cash in my portfolio, I'm not running out shorting the markets. Um, I haven't sold out of all my stocks. I still have a substantial amount in stocks. So all of this being said, showing how stocks are at an extreme valuation, showing how with interest rates low, there's really nowhere to go in terms of investments outside of the stock market. What should investors do now to protect their wealth? And obviously I can't give financial advice, um, but what I think is the best thing and what I've been doing personally is not to focus on the stock market as a whole or the bond market as a whole. Instead, seek out some of the best companies in the stock market that have a strong history of growing earnings, growing cash flows, growing equity, that have strong management teams that are closely aligned with shareholders and that you can buy for an attractive valuation. Because even if the stock market as a whole does go down over the next 12 years, you don't have to own the entire stock market. If you just own a small amount of companies with these qualities, the odds are you will outperform the stock market and will have positive returns while the entire stock market may have negative returns. And so you can learn how to do that on this channel where I make multiple videos going over stocks that I think have attractive risk to return potentials and that I have invested my own money into. So that's it for this video. Let me know down in the comments in 10 years, do you expect the stock market to be higher or lower than it is right now? Personally, I'm not sure, but I definitely don't think what happened in the past 10 years will happen over the next 10 years. If you found value out of this video, hit the like button to help out the channel. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of my new videos. So that's it for now, and I'll see you next time.